is gonna be like an arms race. We need to reform the FDA. It's hard to invest in your community or your small business when you're paying half your money to healthcare costs. Who can make their citizens live the longest? It's gonna help the economy. The longevity dividend. And this is what led you to- Senate Bill 422. That Welcome to Lifespan News. I'm Emmett Short. Today's a conversation with Montana Senator Ken Bogner, who is advancing longevity initiatives in Montana, and now he's running for a Senate seat at the national level. So Montana is surprisingly forward thinking. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I shouldn't be surprised by that. I'm stereotyping Montana, but they are. You could see with their recent crypto legislation and now with Ken's Senate Bill 422, Montana may be the home of the next big longevity tech companies. We talk about Ken's journey to bring this reform and more to Montana and potentially the entire country. So if you're new here, definitely check out some of our other videos and consider subscribing. And now enjoy my talk with Ken Bogner. It's nice to talk to you, Ken. Where are you right now? I'm currently in my 1966 Ford ranch truck that I have been traveling all over my district in. Is it hot there? Does that thing have any AC? No AC. Uh, luckily, I haven't needed it yet. I don't know how much longer I'll have before I'll, I'm wishing I had AC. Yeah. <laughs> Here's what I want to know, because I'm a, I'm a lay person. They told me, you know, state senator, and then they said, well, state, state, state senator. And I'm like, what's the difference? I'm like, so how do you, <laughs> how do you explain to people what type of senator that you are besides, you know, a Montana senator? Okay, so the federal level, we, we just say U.S. senator. State level, we say Montana senator. Uh, we, we interact when state policy overlaps federal policy, uh, but we don't see the U.S. senators or U.S. representatives at the state capitol very often. It's it's rare. What were your uh, were your main issues that that you ran on? So when I first ran, I ran for rural economic development. My district is very rural, so full of farmers and ranchers. Uh, it's an aging population, and a lot of these small communities in Montana are disappearing. So I wanted to see what I could do in the state legislature to help with economic growth. So that was my platform on my first race. I won. And as I started asking more and more questions to my constituents, I found that a large portion of their money was going to healthcare costs. And I shifted from rural economic development to seeing what I could do at the state level with healthcare policy. Kind of a lot of crossover. It is. If you ran on the economy and then they're like, well, we're spending all our money on healthcare, then it's, it's almost the same issue, I guess. Right. It's hard to invest in your community or, you know, your small business when you're paying half your money to healthcare costs. So if you can reduce those costs, people are going to be able to invest in their communities more. And this is what led you to us. I got connected to Alliance for Longevity Initiatives, and we started brainstorming. What can we do in Montana that will ease the burden for older Montanans and Montanans in general? And we came up with a bill, Senate Bill 422, which I introduced last legislative session in Montana, that expands medical right to try in Montana. These are, these are warm leads, right? They're, it's an aging population. They're, they're, you say longevity, you say live longer. They're like, well, that's, that's starting to feel a little close to home, right? So right. I imagine it wasn't too hard of a sell. No, it wasn't. And an issue we have in rural Montana is succession of farms and ranches. A lot of people in the industry are getting older and their children aren't ready to take over the farm and ranch and move out to very rural parts of the country yet as an opportunity for these farmers and ranchers and people in these small towns to be able to live longer and work longer so that their livelihood could stay in the family longer. They were, they were all about it. So you get connected with a for li and they're all about longevity. And, uh, and so the right to try thing comes out. Are people interested in beyond like sort of a right to try? Are they interested in any other sort of, I don't know, government assisted, efforts for longevity do you think that's on on the roadmap for the future or is, or does it stop here no so in in montana they're ready to keep going we have a republican supermajority in montana so our legislature and our state 
state government is interested, but they want government out of the way. They want you know companies and providers to come in and be able to innovate uh, rather than the government standing in the way and you know maybe acting as a hindrance to what what this longevity you know science industry can provide to Montana. And so very interested, and they just want the red tape out of the way. So. It's, it's, it's going to be very exciting to see where we go from here as manufacturers and providers come into the state to practice. I live in Hollywood and, you know, it's all about, uh, you know, staying young and looking good and living forever. And it's very sort of a stark difference from Montana, which you, in my mind feels, you know, I watch Yellowstone. It's all about, right. you know, like nature and uh, it, health in a different way, but not like, you know, right. vanity health. I hope we don't become Hollywood. You know, we really pride ourselves on Montana tradition and culture, but we already are getting a lot of these people coming here to visit. Let's take advantage of them already being here, but we don't want Montana to be the next California. So I don't think this is going to push them to do that. Uh, if, if they come here to, you know, look a little prettier <laughs> for a couple more years, great. Uh, but you know, we'll, we're going to stick strong to our Montana culture here and, you know, we may use it differently. We may use it to work the farms and ranches longer and not necessarily to, to be on the housewife shows of, of Hollywood. <laughs> Good. I would expect nothing less. Thank God. Let's keep, <laughs> let's keep Montana, you know, Montana. That's right. And so now you're on a, a different mission, correct? You're looking to go to Washington and you bring these same sort of policies, uh, to the national level? Yes. So I'm running for U.S. Congress. I want to take that expanded right to try bill that I passed here in Montana to the federal level, get expanded right to try for the entire country and start implementing some of these policies that help will help us innovate as a country and look towards prevention and helping with healthcare costs in that way, rather than, you know, spending so much money uh, fighting diseases as they come. Was that part of the conversation in Montana? However much money is being sort of earmarked for things that are sort of stopgap, whack-a-mole, you know, disease treatments rather than the source. I feel like maybe it's a different a conversation at the state level than it is at the national level. At the national level, you know, there's perhaps more money going towards you know, cancer research or Alzheimer's research. How's that conversation different at the uh, state level and the federal level? Montana doesn't have the budget that the federal government has. So we have to be very smart with how we're spending our money in Montana. And one of our biggest costs is healthcare coverage and what the state is paying for uh, Medicaid and other services. And so if we can get people, Montana residents, uh, to stay healthier and healthier longer, that cut costs for the state. And it helps us move services to other places uh, or cut, cut cut taxes so people can keep you know more of their hard-earned dollars in their own pockets. I was wondering if you got a chance to to watch any of the videos that we've just done recently on kind of speculating about uh, how the future would change if people didn't age. Right. I did. I really enjoyed the government one. And what happens if we elect politicians that can live... Right you know, hundreds of years, what, uh, what policies do we need to implement to make sure that they're not serving, you know, there forever. Uh, so I, I appreciated that and making sure we have term limits, I think is the first thing. And that's, you know, what really good conversation about what happens if, if, you know, people don't have to worry about their health in politics. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting to think about it. just, I mean, if, if somebody could be 200 years old and they've just been kind of an incumbent, they'd have the connections for the money already. They'd have a, a real strong track record. <laughs> it's hard to beat 200 years. Right. You know, it's, how do you run against a guy that's been in office for 200 years? It's hard enough now to beat an incumbent, but an incumbent that's been around for a century would be near impossible, I would think, especially with the resources they accumulate and uh, the name ID. Right. So yeah, there would, there would need to be term limits yeah. for sure. When technology gets pretty crazy though, you know, there's AI and, and technology starts moving faster than, you know, the human brain can even sort of 
keep up with it. I feel like that might cause society to be volatile as well. Because, uh, you know, the more change, the more sort of like social volatility there is. So we can kind of see that already with uh, how fast technology is moving right now. Do you think it might be even beneficial to have some really older people in there with like all that experience? You want diversity. You want to have, you know, some people who've been around for a while and know how things work or had worked. But that's not all you want. You want to bring in some younger people, people with some fresh ideas. That's important too. So you, you need good diversity, but you shouldn't have all of you know, one demographic. I mean, you're probably not running on the idea that you're like the longevity candidate, but it is nice <laughs> to know right. that, uh, that you have those ideals in place. When you take these ideas to, to the federal level, what are you gonna be looking to accomplish? Besides right to try, or, or is it just that? So there's a few things. Uh, right to try is one of them, expanding it federally. Uh, down here in Montana, I want to do it federally. Uh, another has to do with the funding and making sure that we're shifting NIH funding uh, to prevention and innovating and learning how what we can do as a country to move towards longevity medicine. And that will help us innovate and compete worldwide and keep our our citizens healthier and contributing to society longer, that's one. And another is we need to reform the FDA uh, so that you know, we can get these medicines out to the people of America as soon as possible. You know, we don't wanna just be focusing on safety, but efficiency as well, efficacy. And we need to get those out to Montanans, uh, Americans, and by doing that, we need to reform the way they work now and make sure that that you know, we send the funding to research these things now rather than later when it's too late. Other countries have done it and have policies around it where we're trying to play catch up. Do you get any pushback? We're in a gerontocracy, basically. It's these are warm leads as well, right? Like they're older, they're, they're thinking about it. They're pro selfishly go probably should be like, oh, yeah, we should do this. Is there pushback? Not want to change things? People like the status quo, especially who have been in it the longest and who are benefiting from it. So there's people who don't want to see change, I've noticed. But like you just mentioned, there's people who see this as a way to stay in their position longer or to have what they have now uh, for longer. And that gets them to start saying, hey, you know, maybe this is something we want to pursue. So there's, there's both worlds. Uh, the people who are benefiting from, you know, not investing in longevity medicine has been where the biggest pushback has been. There was some study done, I showed it in one of the videos that in, on the economy section where for every year of life that you can add to, to overall to the average, uh, say, American, it results in, I don't know, it was like 30 some billion dollars a year in added revenue for the economy. So my thought after all this was that this is going to be like an arms race for who can make their citizens live the longest because it's going to help the economy. The longevity dividend. It's an impressive number, especially when as a country we're $35 trillion in debt. We need to get that GDP up. And if people can stay in the workforce longer and want to, we should be pushing that. We should be innovating that we are leading the world in this type of research because it's going to benefit our country and our citizens so much. You know, walk around with that study and uh, <laughs> let them know. Yeah, that'll get people to pay attention, especially, you know, I've been traveling on the campaign trail. And that is one of the biggest issues I keep hearing about over and over is we can't stop or we can't keep spending how we are as a government. We just it's. It's unsustainable. We're $35 trillion in debt. So to then say, hey, if we can get people in the workforce longer, healthier longer, so they're not spending as much money on their healthcare costs, then their ears perk up because they're not going to be spending as much personally on healthcare. And at the same time, if we have the whole country you know, in the workforce longer, if they want to be, helps pay down that debt and helps us continue to move forward as a country. So Explaining it to people, people are very receptive to it. That's great. Yeah, it's like a flywheel. Yeah, and that's what we want. We, you know, especially with the birth rate, not what it used to be. 
we need to be more efficient as a people and we need to have those people that want to carry on in the workforce. And this is a great way to do it. Right. Yeah, I know we should get that birth rate up, but it's like we should also uh, try to cure the aging. It's like both of them will help the economy. So then, you know, as an elected official, you got to start thinking, you know, what happens to our birth rate if we are living much longer? Does it, you know, does it continue to go down? Uh, are people willing to have more children if they know they can live healthier longer? Uh, those are questions, you know, we're asking ourselves in government. So it's it's an interesting conversation. Right. What's your advice for groups like ours that, you know, we're just trying to get our message out and and grow? Are there any things that we can do on the on the state or the federal level to help ourselves uh, grow and, and help you get this message out? Highlight these candidates, support them on social media, on podcasts, however you can, because there's so much noise in politics right now and so many issues that you got to start to get people to make this a priority by showing your support and that it is a worthy cause to get behind. And we're in a great time. I mean, a lot of cool science going on, a lot of cool growth in technology. It's never felt more rational to talk about this type of uh, thing for regular people, whereas maybe 10, 20, 30 years ago, it definitely did not seem like something that could be on our doorstep very soon. And now it, it kind of does. Like I said, there, there is so many issues going on right now, and people have more access to information than they did any time in history. So people are wanting to learn new issues, and it's really exciting to see on the campaign trail. And this is one of them. People want to know what is on the future that can help them uh, with their health care and with their pocketbooks and how much money uh, they're able to save. And so it's been great to be on the campaign trail and uh, ha people having an interest in all types of issues. Yeah. So what's next for you? I'm in the road tomorrow back on. I've done every single small town. It feels like in my district and uh, hitting the road to hit them again. Uh, there's not much time. There's only about six weeks left until election day. So it's shaking as many hands as possible, meeting as many people. And to do that, just got to stay on the road. Montana's primary date is June 4th, but our absentee ballots go out May 10th. So it's coming up really quick. I'm excited for you. Hope, uh, hope it goes well. You know, I want to see these policies change at the federal level. Yeah, good luck. Thank you. It's important to get the message out about longevity and aging sciences. So thank you for highlighting me and other candidates that take this, you know, seriously. And it's a priority for them. So thank you Absolutely. for having me. So Senator Bogner is clearly driven by a vision not only to expand medical access, but also to ensure long term health and economic benefits. So we look forward to seeing how his efforts unfold on the national stage. If you'd like to find out more about Ken's campaign, you can check out his website in the description below. A link to the entire interview is down there as well. Let us know who you'd like me to talk to next in the comments section. And remember to like the video so that YouTube knows to show you more of our stuff and subscribe to stay up to date on cutting edge longevity science. You can do that at lifespan.io as well. Cheers.